Welcome back to Sunless Skies. Last episode we did the Rite of the Rose, or the Rites of the Rose, at Caduceus. Did that a couple times, and I still want to do it at least one more time because there's definitely more to do there, but I ran out of moments of inspiration. So, gonna have to wait a little bit to get more eggs and exchange those Relithian mysteries and get more moments of inspiration, etc, etc. In the meantime, I'm over at Paranesi now. Two pretty big things I think I can do here. First is I should be able to build up enough rapport with just one visit with the first guide that we can get. Um, and that will be enough for them to tell me more about the other guides. And also, I want to visit the Brittle Servitor now that we've bargained for their release. Explore the gardens that reduce their terror, right? Yes. Did I have something to... Drop off here. No, but... Ooh, they do have a bargain on Navaratine gemstones. I have to remember that for when I leave. Okay, it's the first one that I almost have good rapport with. The Gallant Reformer. Let's get a port report. I don't think there's any point in going to the Flutist... Oh, never mind. There very much is. Remember, we finally succeeded at getting them to tell us the second rule of Paranesi, which was don't give the nameless a name, I think. Where is it? Oh, that's the to do. Yeah, first rule, don't look back. Second rule, don't give names to the nameless. So I thought that'd be the end of what we could talk about with them, but no, we can ask them a pertinent but impertinent question. You know the second rule now, instead you ask for more information about the halved. Ooh. Nineteen percent chance of success. <laughs> mm, let's offer them a book. Twenty percent. Whoa. Yeah. She lifts the brim of her hat, and you'll never forget her eyes. I served the halved before it was halved, for even longer than I've been in here, child, and I can tell you things that would make your eyes dribble out your ears. I fought in a war that wasn't a war. Our weapons were words that could twist the horizon. I executed an entire language for crimes that no longer exist. Well, that's terrifying. It looks like at least that strengthens our bond, even if we fail. Have to try again next time. Shall we begin? And it's this cautionary tale that increases my bond. New total, eight. Yes. Press the reformer for information on the other chaplains. For some time, he stares at a shattered statue in the corner. Very well, he says finally. I'll tell you what I know. All chaplains are ex-prisoners, says the reformer. I was the first and helped the rest escape. I know them all, old selves and new. Oh, yeah, that's... I think I figured that was probably the case. The deformer was the rebellious servant of a lightless star. Its sentence was harsh. It changed itself to become human, then less than human. The Conformer was a legendary piratess, dashing, extraordinary, heroine of a dozen skies. Paranesi extinguished her. And the Performer. I know less, except that he fled from old London, escaping the wrath of a false god. I remember what he was like when incarcerated. Courteous, circumspect, and... Though he had the bluest eyes you ever saw, he hid them behind dark spectacles. The eyes changed first. Hmm. I'm thinking of this from the perspective of which one of these might be Langley's lost lovers. Definitely not the deformer or the conformer, but the performer? Possibly. Possibly. 
very possibly the glib performer. But weren't they the one that it was almost impossible for me to actually get rapport with them? Hmm. Okay, I'm trying to remember which person had the brittle servitor. Uh, I don't, um, I think it might have been the gray conformer. Ah, yes. Whew. Deliver the good news to the brittle servitor. You've successfully petitioned for its sentence to be reduced, but it has not been pardoned entirely. Is this servitor now free? Opalescent sparks dance wildly around its ankles. You tell the servitor that its sentence is commuted. It will no longer have to change utterly in order to escape. It can even remain a servitor, rather than descending into something lesser. But sacrifices must still be made before Paranesi will lose its grip. This cannot be. This being cannot change. The lesser being will find another way. Not happy about that. Okay. I don't know what the other way would be. What can I do? Hmm. Ask the conformer for help. Convince the servitor to change itself. Twenty-three percent chance of success. Hmm. Do I want to let the servitor out as it is? It seems to be kind of a dick. Let's try to convince the servitor to change itself. Change can be healthy, even for a member of its kind. You will not be its scapegoat. Yeah, I figured. A frosty pause. This being cannot change. The servitor's hollow monotone somehow manages to convey impatience. Worlds change. Boundaries change. Winds and gods and laws change. It is in the nature of the servitor to weather these changes and remain the same. Ask the conformer for help. Can someone escape Paranesi without changing at all? The change can occur by proxy, says the conformer, if the prisoner can find a free volunteer. A difficult task. To my recollection, it has only occurred a handful of times in our history. Imagine a besotted romantic willing to sacrifice their life to free their lover from Paranesi. But to lose their life is far, far easier than to sacrifice their identity when their identity is tied inextricably with their love. To free their loved one, they must kill the love itself. Few can accept this. God, I hope that's not the fate of Langley and their lover. Like, what if a prisoner is Langley's lover? Probably not. We probably would have encountered them already, maybe? Finish speaking to the servitor. The conformer stands a little way away, patiently waiting for you to finish your business. Eavesdrop on the conformer's questions. I know we've done this before, but I don't remember what that does. Some sky stories. Is that it? So we can't gain any, like, rapport with this person, I guess? A formless thing. I think we've seen this before. This is testing my knowledge of the rules. What was my name? Ignore it and move on. Okay, that's it for now. 
Let's take on this bulk and tankery. The one right in front of me. Let's grab some of this first. Yeah, I'm good on supplies and stuff. Ah, okay. It's not any threat. Headed on over in the direction of the Empyrean. For a couple reasons. One is that there's a lot of um, curators around here, and curators' eggs, and curators' eggs equal Eletherian mysteries, which equal moments of inspiration, which equal rites of the roads at Caduceus. So let's explore this place. Also, in the patch notes from the latest patch, uh, not that to do. I have a note here for visit Xanthus Moon around Eagle's Empyrean. That's one of the things they added in the patch, the ability to visit the Xanthus Moon. Thing is, I've never found the Xanthus Moon. So, yeah, I guess it's probably either here or maybe around here. So let's try to find it. Let me see what this is up here. I don't think it would be an egg. I don't think the eggs are this far away. I think they're mostly like in the buildings or right next to them. This is probably like a crossroads. Oh, or just random stuff. And this one's a crossroads. Refuse F off. Give me that tiny terror reduction. There's no way that one's an egg. That one probably is. Unsettled dreams. Seek company. Partial success. Have I ever gotten that before? On your way to the galley, you round up as many crew and officers as you can and lead them on a midnight raid of the pantry. <laughs> Brandy is drunk, Murgatroyd's fungal crackers are devoured in bulk. I think I have had that happen before, actually. Yes. Oh, those both might be more. Let's go for this one. Yeah, it is. So many moments of inspiration. That one also didn't spawn a curator. Lucky. Let's go for this one. It's the last one that might be an egg. Hello.
might be better to use my mines. Let's try it. Ooh. Yeah, it did some damage, I think. Oh. I think I need some terror reduction. Take a trophy. Ah. Oh. What is that sound? I thought that was just a general sound, but it sounds like it's coming from a very specific place down here. Is it? Is that the sound of them? Do they sound like thunder? <laughs> I think it's just the sound of the thunder around here, but it sounds like it's coming from a specific place rather than like all over the place. Anyway, another freaking egg. Great luck. That's a lot of moments of inspiration. We're gonna get a spawn this time. Yes. Whoop. Boosted the wrong way. I should not have shot that fast, or that close. Hurt me. Oh! Oh my god! That thing can twist. Ah, let's get another terror reduction. I just don't want to find this Xanthus moon. Let's see if it's out here. That could be it. Is it just me or does this sort of look like a person? Like that's the head, that's left arm, right, or whatever arm, one arm, another arm, leg, leg. Anyway. Let's go over there. Oh, that's just a clot of night. Oh, you're a dowser engine. You're my own people. But I'm still not turning off my light. Ooh. Trying to release a mine, but they're too close. Get away from me! Oh my god! Pretty 
tough. They're really, they move so erratically. Scavengets plating. The higher your hearts, the more whole you will restore. I'm not going to give very much then. Partial success. Uh, call my engineers back. Something's gone wrong. I don't want to lose them. I've got eight a hole. That's bad. I don't think the Xanthus moon is here. I mean, I assume being a moon, it would be pretty big. I guess it's probably somewhere down here. Yeah, there's actually it's a pretty big chunk of Eleutheria that I haven't explored ever. Hmm. Let's head back to Pan along the way, hit up these two things. I encounter some grievers. Because I've got a lot of visions of the heavens that I can trade for a moment of inspiration. It seems like the grievers are very locational. Like, it seems like they pretty much aren't really up on the second, like, the, the upper half of this globe. It seems like I pretty much never encounter them up here, only down here. every shot. Definitely need to go get repaired. Please get a moment of inspiration. Nope. Vision of the heavens. Yeah, vision of the heavens for... Five moments of inspiration, though. If I could just find the Grievers to do it. Structural damage, damn it. Hmm. 100% chance to venture outside and fix it myself? Oh, let's do that then. Oh, it actually increased my hole, too. It gave me a vision of the heavens. Oh, we can actually full on explore this ruin. Here's a pale palace, or perhaps temple of old Eleutheria, adorned with leaning columns. Read visions of the heavens for a moment of inspiration. Ooh, how many? Oh, just four. It's more efficient than using grievers. Well, heck yeah. Decipher ancient inscription. Weathered markings freckle the stones. The inscriptions are written in the language of the suns. You decipher what you can. They hint at a number of feuding solar alliances or conjunctions. Each conjunction holds uh, upholds a different philosophy, as obtuse and fiery as the stars themselves. This is a blind hermitage? Yeah. These things have just been wrecking my terror. Because even just observing them gives me 10 terror. I could just not do them, of course, but I want the moments of inspiration. Went back to Pan, repaired my engine, got a bunch of moments of inspiration, all that good stuff. Headed back to Paranesi because I really want to hit up this place hard as much as I can because there's a lot to do and... I can only do it in little bits. Just 
two tours, and then I gotta come back in, I assume, like two weeks. Get some terror reduction. Now the question, question is, who do I go with? The Gallant Reformer has the uh, Flutist, which I really want to have them answer me about the Halved, because any information on the Suns is gold. And I also want to attempt to convince the Brittle Servitor to change. So yeah, let's do those two. Port report. Begin. Oh no. Oh no. You can only visit the flute before you do the shall we begin thing. I... Fuck. Is there any point in getting more rapport with this person? Is there anything else they can do me? Like, do for me? Oh, wait. Oh, we can now go back to the sound of the flute. Okay. Whew. Tell her a story. 20% chance of success. Oh my god, thank god. A secret that cannot be carved in stone. She beckons you closer and tells you something. Even as she tells you, you can feel her words shriveling in your memory like paper to a candle. Drat. Now you have a migraine. Perhaps you can work out what she said from the shape of the holes left behind. <laughs> Just fragments remain. She spoke of a murder that took many forms. Blood in the wind, knives in the void, fingers pinching a candle wick. You dare not ask again. My friendship with the flute's quality has gone. I guess that ate up all my friendship points. <laughs> okay, well, I've got a staring enigma. I'm not really excited about that. I was hoping for literal information that I could actually read, but... It just kind of disappeared in my mind. What if we go back to the flutus? Yeah, I can't do anything. I can't imagine there's any point in going back to the flutus at this point. That's gotta be it, right? Okay. Great conformer. Let's go try to convince the servitor. Oh no, I can make myself a scapegoat for the servitor? Change myself on the servitor's behalf? No. Hell no. No. Nope. I'll take my 23% chance. Which reminds me, before I go into this place, I really should put on... I should put on my heart. By that I mean I should change out my officers. Not that it would make a huge difference, but... You know. It's something. And that's it. I've got 151 Sky Stories. Nice. Another formless thing. What is my name? Ignored and move on. I still haven't learned the third rule of Paranesi. Oh, I think I had a... Prospect? Here? I don't. Oh, I have a prospect for the House of Rods and Chains, which is actually where I'm going to head next. 